Welcome to AI Decoded, that time of the week when we look in depth at some of the most eye-catching stories in the world of artificial intelligence. This week on the show, we take a look at the skills we will need to learn to keep up with this exciting technology. So this is a gift to you from a school in Cyprus. We're about to hear from their, their former director of the Space Centre, and he's actually just been promoted. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to steal his thunder, but there are children who are building these sorts of technologies, 3D printing faces. So I went to Cyprus and I actually met the school myself and I asked them to produce that for you because I knew that you'd it, have a little it, chuckle. It, it sounds like me. It's almost got, I think it's got the same hair parting. Are you trying to tell, <laughs> are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Well, we just basically took images of you yeah. um, from the web, yeah. right? And there are a lot, is he which is great. Intelligent. <laughs> he's artificial. I'm, I'm not going to answer. What do you mean he's artificial? <laughs> Very well. You just said I'm sticking around. Okay, I've got some form of defence here. <laughs> So we took images of you off the web. I'm being very careful with what I say yeah. now. And, um, and we were able to use those, well, they were able to use those to 3D print the face. And they've right. actually, they don't, let me just be clear, they don't do this of, of live people. I asked for this, okay, right. and they've done me a huge favour. And, you know, they do dead people. Here's a, <laughs> they do people they can learn from okay. in history. And, you're, you know, you're about to hear yeah. about that. But what I love about this, Christian, is that they use a Raspberry Pi. And the director, the former director of space, tell people now what a Raspberry Pi is. So do, it's, a, it's a little mini computer, right? Okay. And you can program it. So they're it. programming it. They're using language yeah. models. And I saw children as young as sort of 13, 14, coding with Python, um, using open source or closed source like ChatGPT, for example. Right. I've seen them printing the faces. They can use a 3D scanning tool if you're actually with them to 3D scan it so they get the dimensions perfectly done. And they and, built Albert Einstein. Yeah, can I, can I just, look, you know I go to thousands of schools across the world, right? Because yes. I work with lots of schools. Um, there are lots of innovative schools out there which, and they're really impressive. I honestly have never seen anything like this. Yeah. And so I can't wait for everybody to meet the man who is responsible for all of this. He's absolutely yeah. incredible, he's inspirational and he makes me want to go back to school as Let's long as he'll be my teacher. Yeah. Help us Anastasio. He's the head of innovation and AI at the Pascal International Education Centre, which is the international school in Larnaca. You're very welcome to the programme. Hello, Christian. How are you? I'm good. I'm, well, thank you, I should say. I think I should say thank you, although it's a terrifying vision of the future uh, that we're looking at here. But I'm, I'm really impressed. Tell me, tell me about the, the model that they actually built as part of their education, which was Albert Einstein. What was the purpose of that and what does Albert do? With schools, with the, with the public. So we wanted to show them how to use AI, how to, how to understand it. So when you understand something, you know, you're not scared of it anymore. So they started innovating uh, and, you know, they wanted to build Einstein. So they actually made uh, a, an AI chatbot from Einstein. With a mask. He, I mean, the, the, he looks like Albert Einstein. Um, and they, as Priya's been saying, they, they print the masks themselves, as we're looking at right now. Yeah. Writing code, connecting them to larger language models. So it's connected, yeah. is it, to ChatGPT? Yeah, it's connected to ChatGPT, and they've also made uh, a server with their own Llama model, let's say, open source. Mm -hmm. So it's an open source and also closed source software. But uh, they did it by themselves. Um, we always teach the students how to teach themselves, and then we just let them to create and innovate and think outside the box. That's the mission of the projects. Elpis, I think it's absolutely incredible, and that's why I was so blown away that I had to bring a 20 kilo sort of version of Christian's face here. Um, but Elpis, what was so interesting was that when I visited your school myself, and I do lots of school visits, you were then the director of the Space Centre. I mean, I've never yeah. been to a school with a director of a, any sort of Space Centre or anything with a like station. it. Attached right, to exactly. It. And when I was there, on top of the roof of your school, you have Europe's largest ground station, don't you? I mean, that, yeah. that's it. And yeah. that's the image, I think, that I took when I was there um, with my phone, I think. Um, Six years ago, we wanted to show students about space exploration. We used to build a, a, a space centre, then a ground station. So we used this uh, ground station to send uh, Pico satellites uh, into the stratosphere. Uh, and we stream the live feed with experiments that the students uh, put there uh, 
not only to our school, but 68 schools around Cyprus. So it's like um, a national event, let's say, that happens once a year. Incredible. And, and Elpis, you know, with schools, they might be watching this, head teachers will be watching this and thinking, wow, that's incredible. But, you know, they will feel like they don't have the financial means to do this. Let's talk about something very practical that you understand at schools. They won't be able to timetable this because timetabling is really difficult. So what were the challenges that you faced and then how did you overcome them? Um, Priya, we started this uh, myself and three students with a budget of 150 euro five years ago. Wow. Um, the important thing is the idea. Uh, you can get sponsorships and everything, but you need to have a ground solid out of this world idea to get people to, you know, to listen to you, to inspire them. And then everything comes into place if you put a lot of work. Well, you, you must be very persuasive because obviously when it comes to innovation and disruption, one of the key challenges is change management, is getting buy-in upwards, downwards, across from everybody. Now, I know that Globe Educate, um, the group of schools that Pascal is part of, they have an innovation strategy, right? They have a strategy on future competencies for all the... They have about 80 schools, correct? So 80 yeah. schools around the world. So they've got a future competencies curriculum. They focus on well-being. That's a very active part of the group's strategy. Do you think with everything that you've done, and we've not really, Shane Christian, I'm going to tell you right now, we've not even, we've scratched the surface here with what you've seen today as to what this school is doing. Um, and you, you, you do well as well in this sort of traditional education when it comes to assessments. Uh, the children that I met were certainly beaming about the skills that they were learning. Does it need to have a sort of top-down approach in terms of strategy? Because I'm just thinking, how do we practically allow schools to now think, I can do this. In ICS, Paris, Milan, Rome, Nice. Uh, uh, it's another one coming in London next year. So we actually did what you actually said uh, in a record time. In one year and a half, we actually spread this project to other schools also. So it's not that difficult to do it. You just need to move fast, precise, uh, and calculate the risk, let's say. Now that you're on this council, all respect for Chinese walls between, <laughs> Obviously, you you all of five I, I minutes. Know, but you're you're part of this team that has to build the skill set now <laughs> in, in the UK. Do you so, not? Well, so the count the council has a very specific role. So we're going to have to you right. know have a look at that. And um, it, it's really just advising on specific areas that are that, that are priorities. So it's not a but policy this is a priority, role, isn't it? it? So we don't devise policy. No. Um, at all. But, the, but uh, the Prime Minister has talked about this as a priority. See, that's about something skilling. I'm excited Do we about. have, I mean, uh, we've we just discussed that there's one coming to London, but we currently don't have anything like this in Britain, do we? I haven't seen anyone doing anything like this, but having said that, I mean, please do reach out to us because we'd love mm. to come and visit you if you are. Um, there are schools that have STEAM programmes in place and they're very impressive. Uh, North London Collegiate School is doing something at the moment that's really, really exciting. They've just built an entire ideas hub. Um, this space centre and building a satellite and a hexapod that's larger than this studio that I saw in Cyprus is highly unusual. Right. Um, so I think people are going to have to come up with programmes where they can match the skills, which I'm really excited we're about to talk about, with okay. people who really know what they're talking about. And they'll have to do that matching process, but to ensure there's no digital divide, because you need to ensure that all schools and all children have these possibilities yeah. and that's why I wanted Elpis to be here so that we could talk to him about what he's done. I mean Elpis obviously it really helps if you're able to to work with with Raspberry Pi and, and, and programming and show how it works and, and what you can do with it but 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 does this machine Albert Einstein does it also give back are they learning directly from it and is there any evidence that that kind of learning is more beneficial than perhaps person-to-person -person learning? Um, I believe it's, it's a learning curve because um, they interact with the chatbot, they get the information, let's say, they can even uh, evaluate if the information that comes from the chatbot is correct. So it's an exploration, but we also we always use like ethical guidelines, you know, when we do this with all the students, just to make sure that we are following, uh, we're, we're taking the right path. Yeah, and I think, um, Elpis, yeah. when, I, when I was there, I mean, certainly, and I th I've seen this in a lot of schools, is what they want to do is allow this to enable and augment. It's not about replacing right. the learning experience. Yeah. So, okay. yes, you can learn to code. Yes, you can learn to, to interact even. And it might be tuned with, you know, former things that Albert Einstein might have said or, mm -hmm. you know, his theories, for example. But it is about augmenting the experience because, actually, people have short memories. In the pandemic, people were 
desperate for people to go back to school. And school is not just transfer of textbook from, you know, information from textbook into brain. It's so much more than that. And that peer-to-peer -peer learning, teacher mm. and student learning. So, I mean, what I've seen is amazing. Um, and like I said, I hope this is inspiration for everybody else. Well, it's inspiration to me. Pascal, the Pascal School only do dead people, as Priya says, which is a real <laughs> relief. Uh, just stick to dead people, help us, <laughs> and not BBC presenters. Uh, that would be my advice. And then I can maybe stay in a job for Thank a little you longer. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on what you do. And it's really set us up for the second so part much. of our programme because coming up, we're going to delve deeper into.